Okay, we're we're recording. I've waited a long time for this, many years, many, many years. And what brings it to the forefront right now is the fact that I have an ongoing litigation in which even the judge and the defendants are all members of the Corps of Cadets of Texas A&M. The question here is Gene Stallings a murderer? You have no idea. I've mentioned it in places, but I've held my tongue for a long time. And I'm not even sure if I'm recording. Yeah, there I am. <clears throat> Where to begin with something that goes back to the 1960s, 68. How should I preface my remarks? Uh, first, one of the most important things is that for those of you who weren't there, for those of you who know nothing about football except sitting in the stands and uh, eating hot dogs and drinking overpriced beer and crap like that uh, and worshiping people, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I have a, this will obviously go into three or four segments anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes each, but today I felt like it was time to start telling the truth as I know it and to the best of my knowledge, based upon all uh, material evidence and of the testimony of witnesses one of which includes my brother, Rolf Frank Kruger, the current defendant in my lawsuit pending in the 21st District Court. You know, Rolf, how do you think I can have any... You were really stoned that night you came back from that that football game somewhere out back east when you were playing for the Niners and we were living together. You were stoned out your mind, and that's one of the few times that you get the truth out of people. But it took me years later to connect all the dots and other witnesses, etc. But let me start this presentation by saying is that there's plenty of evidence that a a junior player at Texas A&M was beaten to death by Gene Stallings and assistant coach Elmer Smith. That's who my brother named. The other witness didn't name him, but there's a ton of evidence that a a Texas A&M player disappeared and was apparently beaten to death by Gene Stallings and Elmer Smith, the assistant coach because a beating to death looks just like a death from from a a football practice this is going to be a long story people I'm probably not going to let up on it until after my litigation is completed I don't really see anything more important that I could talk about than to destroy this heinous, ridiculous claims of tradition and morality and so on at Texas A&M when it's always been a military, all-male college until recently before it was taken over by the uh, cultural Marxists, etc. It's 
they always a and m tries to portray itself as better than other uh universities by claiming that it's all honorable and and we're all gentlemen and officers and gentlemen and yada yada blah blah bull fucking shit <clears throat> okay First, I need to give you a little background on what I do know, which is that Gene Stallings and Charlie Kruger were on the same championship team under a guy who is a complete weirdo, loser, fuck up. His name was Paul Bear Bryant from Arkansas. Now, for those of you who don't know it, Paul Bear Bryant used to break his foot off. He used to literally kick my own brother in the ass every day at practice. And for those of you who have not been in combat, don't know how to fight, I never try to kick a guy in the balls. Never. That doesn't usually never works. Early on, my teachers and my own experience taught me never kick a guy in the balls. Always kick him in the asshole. Oh, that will put... I've seen a lot of people that were incapacitated. I've had, Actually, I'm sorry. I've had a lot of opponents who were completely incapacitated for a month, three months, six months, couldn't sit down without thinking about me. Because they tried to engage me in combat. You kick a guy in the balls, you're liable to just piss him off. You kick a guy in the asshole, you're going to hurt him. You're going to put him down. You're going to put him out of the... It's it's done. And, you know, I've always taught my students to always go for the asshole. Stick your big toe up their asshole. That's what I always tell them. Break your foot off in their asshole. Don't fuck around with their dick or their balls. or, And that's my point was that Bear Bryant, the evil Bear Bryant, who so many of you worship, you queer ass motherfuckers. I'm sorry. You people that fucking worship athletes and shit like that and worship these old coaches and shit like that are so full of shit because you don't know them. You didn't know them. I met Paul Bear Bryant when I was like... Uh, and he completely ignored me, unlike uh, Gene Stallings, who's the subject of this these videos. I met uh, Paul Bear Bryant when they won their first uh, championship and stuff. But I was like, oh, gosh, what was I, like, two, three years old? Tops. And my brother and his wife, who's older than him, we're living in uh, married housing in Texas A&M University. But Paul Bear Bryant used to regularly kick his players in the asshole on a routine basis. And you, you got to somewhat admire these guys because to, to be able to continue to compete and stay on the team after you've had a, a, a you know, a, a foot, you know, broke off in your ass is really hard. And, and, and for you, for those, for those of you who worship Paul Bear Bryant, you're a bunch of sick faggots, homosexual, you know, bad guy worshiping little queers is what you are. You have no idea who, who Paul Bear Bryant was, is, was now. And I've been waiting to tell this story about uh, Gene Stallings until he died, but he just doesn't seem to want to die. And I believe his his son is what is he? He's, he's got a son. It's a Down syndrome son. Son. I'm leading into the many factors that play in to this uh, into this retelling of the facts of the story to the best of my knowledge. And I'm the best investigator so far. Okay, I'm almost at 10 minutes. 
Uh, <clears throat> okay. Where should I begin? Where should I begin? And no, that's not uh, pure water. That's Pinot Grigio. Uh, I guess I should begin with the fact that my brother, Rolf Frank Kruger, who is not much of a brother, he and I were cohabitating because I was a very good houseboy. I cleaned up his doggy doo-doo and, and all his other problems. And, uh, you know, and actually, his career at that point was ending at San Francisco because they couldn't get all three Kruger brothers on the team, although he was trying. That was actually his final goal. But Charlie had already retired, you know, no. 73 I'll go back if I have to correct <clears throat> but this is was my first indication my first uh, this is my first evidence my brother Rolf had come back from I don't know they were playing like Pennsylvania or something somewhere back east and you know, I got a job, shit, I'm working 12 hours a day, sometimes 24-hour shifts at San Francisco Juvenile Justice, Log Cabin Ranch School, La Honda, California. And uh, he'd come in, he'd made it back on the plane and stuff like that, and he was in bed, and I could tell he was whacked on opioids out his fucking mind. And he was mumbling and jumbling to me, and trying to keep me in the room, his bedroom longer than he, because he wanted company, which is really, it's pretty common with people who are either meth heads or, and he probably was on meth for all the fuck I know. But people on uh, meth and people on opioids, they like to talk as much as alcoholics do or whatever it's, or even more. Uh, <clears throat> he was laying in bed and he somehow broke into the story about he started telling me that some junior player was about to take some senior player's position with uh, with uh, Bear Bryant and uh, no, it was Stallings, I'm sorry <clears throat> and uh even then, I by the well, he didn't even mention that. No, I got to I got to be absolutely correct in what I say here. And he said that uh, essentially that uh, you know, uh, Stallings' son was retarded. He has Down syndrome and was n never a topic of conversation. Not allowed. Etc. I'm sorry, it's a little warming up today. I'll, you'll see a fly come in here. And uh, <clears throat> uh, he said that a junior player had told, actually a senior player had told uh, Stallings, I've got to get this first part right before I go on to two or three. He said that a senior player who was about to lose his position because he was pretty much worthless or not meeting uh, uh, Bear Bryant's uh, uh, hellacious uh, standards, he claimed that, not Bear Bryant, I mean Stallings' hellacious standards, or he claimed that a junior player had said something regarding his his son who has down syndrome and who that son is still alive apparently oh my god he's 
freaking as old as I am. And my brother, Rolf Frank Kruger, told me in his own bedroom in Redwood City, California, in the, the, one of the duplexes he owned, that Stallings and Elmer Smith had called the kid up to to the uh, coach's office, I think is what it was, and had given him a good beating. So... I just let it kind of pass on for years until I began talking to what is a totally disreputable source, except for certain things. And that was one, you know, deceased Kenneth Earl Davis, loser, you know, drunk, uh, liar, thief, person of bad repute, but... You can't help when one person's story syncs up with your uh, story that's been told to you by your own brother. I had been mentioning, I think, it to him while we were smoking a little pot or something like that. And he goes, yeah, yeah, that's the guy died. He goes, and he said his brother, Ted, Thomas Edward Davis, who's probably deceased by now had uh was well aware of that as were at least 200 of the highest ranking people in the brian brazos college you know brazos county college station brian area he even said his brother ted with the team right after that because all the evidence points to the fact that Gene Stallings and Elmer Smith beat that young player to death. Like I said, a beating to death looks just like a, a death on the football field. This is where I need to break in, jump ahead, and start pointing out little facts like the fact that uh, the uh, Brian Daly Eagle, the regional sports writer, <clears throat> Jerry Butler, not Jerry Wagoner, had written a, uh, a column called Where Are the Aggies At? That was when this kid disappeared. And stuff I should break right here and now point out that I was at home from California and answered the phone when the university called and said that my brother Rolf had had some heat problems and had had a bad reaction to penicillin. Why are you giving this penicillin to somebody that's having? And that they would he would be in the university clinic for a few days. This was right at the time that this young man died. His obituary was published and his obituary was cut out by the Brian Daly Eagle before it was sent to the microfilmers at the Ellis unit unit north of Huntsville, Texas. The Ellis unit being uh, a uh, one of the many units of the Texas Department of Corrections. And it was actually Kenny Davis that told me that the kid died. And in years later, as I pursued other things, I began to get into the uh, get into the uh, the uh, microfilm at the Bryan Library, which is the only other source for photocopies of the Brian Daly Eagle. And during that course, which I, you know, like little kids would come up to me and go, what you're doing? Uh, I'm investigating a murder by a prominent man. It's, and there was this kind of large breasted, homely, uh, 
uh, research library and to kind of control the whole research area and stuff. Uh, actually, when I finally came across, located the guy's obituary, I asked her, I said, come take a look at this. I'm sorry, I keep looking over at the red spot here instead of at the camera. I said, come over here and take a look at this. And I took her, uh, actually, there's a, there's a microfilm viewer out front, a couple of them, and there's one in the back and, and the research, you know, you know, materials. And I showed it to her. Uh, the eagle itself had cut out. I'm sorry, I've got a. I'm going to go 30 minutes on this. I don't give a shit. This story may be one of the final stories I tell before. No, nah, I don't think anybody's going to even make an attempt on my life. You got to be pretty fucking stupid to do that. <clears throat> anyway, I took this particular kind of middle aged, uh, bosomy. <clears throat> librarian into the viewing machine in the back in the reference area and I pointed out to her that that this whole kid's obituary was cut out and she goes oh well they must have had some kind of this blah 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 and I said no next page and I scrolled to the next page and showed the reference librarian that nobody is going to cut out the heart of what was about a 50 column inch major story in the Brian Dale Eagle. That doesn't happen. That just piqued my curiosity and my drive more. And the more I dug around, the more I dug around, I could see that the ruling members of, you know, it's, it's this way. Please, I'm not trying to point out. It's this way all over the world. Every county, every state, every nation is full of crooked, homicidal, cover-up. Please, you're not going to con me. It's not just Brazos County. Although Brazos County is rather notorious for its criminality. I know I was tortured and almost killed by them in one man cell number three, the Brazos County Jail, on a, on a frame up. At least the cop finally did the right thing and shot herself in the head. When I saw the effort that this, the ranking members of this community went to, to hide, you couldn't find this guy's name anywhere on the rosters or any, just completely disappeared this guy. That confirmed what Rolf Frank Kruger had said in part. He didn't tell me, and that's what makes me think that Rolf Frank Kruger was such an ass kissing, ass licking, you know, you know, that he probably helped to relocate the body down from the coach's office onto some playing field. That's where I'll need to jump back here now to Jerry Butler before Jerry Wagoner became the sports columnist for the Eagle for decades. Jerry Butler when this happened, wrote, and I still have copies of it, and it's still in the paper. Jerry uh, Butler wrote an article, Where Are the Aggies? That's the title. He had gone to the stadium. He had gone to the golf course thinking they had maybe spread out there to, like, run passing, uh, you know, 
and other things like that. <clears throat> and uh, just couldn't figure out where they were at. Where they were at were covering up and hiding the body and the demise and the beating to death of a young man whose name I don't even know. Let me repeat that. I've researched this a lot at my risk. I was, and <clears throat> I still don't know the young man's name, but I'm here today. What's the, the French term? It's, what was it goes back to Jacques, Dreyfus, all that stuff. I'm here to accuse Gene Stallings of murdering one of his own football players and Elmer Smith, who's long deceased. And I have no idea. I have no doubt that you did it. And that this, this corrupt society around here, which I'm trying to tell you, all societies are corrupt. I'm quite sure you did it. I'm not going to, you can keep on, you know, putting up your resumes and you're all your, yeah, you know, sweetie, sweet. I was the, you know, I was the head coach at A&M when we beat Alabama and all this stuff. But then all of a sudden, uh, why did you all of a sudden have to go to being a defensive back coach for the Cowboys before actually getting a pro job or the Alabama job? almost at 27 minutes. This is just episode one of which I think I'm going to make at least three or four to keep digging into the fact that the most socially prominent, most socially powerful person in the Brazos Valley area, Gene Stallings, murdered a young man with the help of Elmer Smith and everybody, including my brother, Rolf Frank Kruger covered up that murder. As a matter of fact, like I said before, I think Rolf helped carry the body to a convenient area so that it was, you know, because it's kind of hard to be beat to death inside of a coach's office because that's where he told me where it happened. Rolf Frank Kruger, you're a disgusting, slimy human being, just like Gene Stallings. Bear Bryant and his other star, uh, Gene, uh, Charles Andrew Kruger. You fuckers are, will have gotten away with it, but I'm going to leave here on YouTube and in the cloud a permanent record of the fact that I know you're a murderer, Gene Stallings. Elmer Smith, and that Raw Frank Kruger was accessory, at least after the fact, to murder. You're not, by any means, an honorable man, Raw Frank Kruger. You're a criminal. You're a drug enhanced, drug abusing. Of course, in the NFL, it's not drug abuse. It's legal. So this is just part one. I may go on to part two immediately. Thank you.